Jalen Waddle combining for 66 receiving yards, second and seven. With a run right here, bouncing outside, and in for another touchdown! What a win for the Seahawks. Now, how did I feel about this game? You will find out after a word from our sponsor, SeatGeek. SeatGeek is a mobile ticketing app for sporting events, concerts, and other events. They make the buying experience easier by the app ranking each ticket from 0 to 10 to see if you are getting a good deal, and you can see exactly where you are sitting. I regularly use that app, and I have had nothing but a fantastic experience with SeatGeek. Use my promo code ROOFTOPSPORTS to get $20 off of your first purchase. Link to the code, app, and website will be in the description, so take advantage, and thank you. And the Seahawks are going to finish this game going 3-0 and against the Miami Dolphins. They have won this game. And congratulations to Mike McDonald on a 3-0 and start. Mm -hmm. And Epic Sea Films, take me to it. Like, what did you like about this game? So, so what, what I like about the game, what I've liked about the team so far, is some of the decisions that uh, Mike McDonald makes and the team itself. So I think what I really like is I like the offense and the direction of the offense is going and stuff like that. Like some of those big explosive plays, we didn't see that as much with uh, Shane Waldron's offense versus Ryan Grubb's offense. So I think that has really improved our team. Also, I think the, the brightest bright spot of our team is our defense. How much our defense went from basically being one of the worst last year to being considered one of the best because we're allowing some of the least amount of points per game. So I think those are kind of our bright spots is our offense and our defense. Now, one thing I think we could work on is our special teams. That needs work. If yeah, take me to it. It's like, what's the issues that you have with the special teams? So the special teams is allowing too much uh, runbacks for the uh, opposing team. So on, on like punts and on, on like kickoffs, we're allowing them to get too many yards on a run. Which we did. And that was, and it's safe to say that, that the Seahawks were able, the defense was able to bail that, bail the bad special teams out. So there was that. So I guess that's your negative takeaway from the game today was just the bad special teams. I mean, my bad takeaway, I'm going to say it. Well, first, let me do a positive thing because I want to sound a little bit more positive. Yeah. I liked how the defense played with the exception of the running game. They did get beaten up just a little bit, but they did stop the passing very well, but kind of easy to, well, kind of easier to do so when. <laughs> Miami was down to their backup and their third string quarterback with Tua yeah. having an injury. Other things I liked was DK Metcalf made big plays early mm -hmm. as he did step up, scored a touchdown, and Zach Charbonnet at the end was also able to muscle that through to get those two touchdowns as he was like really grinding it but struggling throughout the entire game, but he still found a way to find the end zone twice, in twice including that drive where that got the Seahawks to the 24 points. Now, the things that concern me is obviously the offensive line makes Geno Smith look really bad. And I know I'm going to say it. I am not a Geno Smith fan, but man, was that offensive line terrible. And those interceptions was not like it's not like Geno Smith was throwing it to the to like the DB or a safety or anything. They were both blocked. And the first one was blocked by Zach Charbonnet, who tried to catch it, but he couldn't catch it. The running back, of course. And the second one was just a batted ball. It just happened to go to a defensive lineman or a linebacker or whatever it was. So offensive line is going to need a lot of work because although I'm very excited about the 3-0 start, let's, take a, let's hit the brakes for a second. The first game, they played Denver, a rookie quarterback, won by only six points. But yeah, it was that late touchdown given up by Bo Nix and he had to run for it. Patriots, they're pretty much... In a new era, post Belichick, well post Brady, obviously. I shouldn't even be saying Brady at this point. <laughs> Kobe Brissett, he's a backup quarterback, and he may lose his starting job soon to Drake May. Who knows if they even plan to do that? And then this third game, they played Miami, who doesn't even have Tua, and everyone's just pretty much banged up on this team. Like you saw so much banged upness yeah. out of Miami. So that's why I'm saying. Hit the brakes on the excitement because next week they're in Monday Night Football. Granted, they they usually play well in Monday Night Football, but they're playing against the Detroit Lions, and that's not going to be an easy team to say the least. No. And before we even and hold on, before we get into the Lions game, how are you feeling about any other takeaways that you had from the Seahawks game? Yeah, I think I think what I see is that. The Seahawks are doing what they need to do to finish games off, you know, because they could be fumbling and letting these games like slip away from them, but they're not letting them slip away. 
that's, I think, a good takeaway to notice from the team is that they are being very disciplined to finish the game so that they start. And that's the other positive thing to take away is the Seahawks' penalties have really declined that's true. Much significantly. I'm not, not sure exactly. We have to look at the stats some other time. But it just feels, just by feeling, we don't notice as many flags as we saw from the Pete Carroll era. And when it was Pete Carroll, flags were literally all over the place. Like, you could literally paint the entire field with mm-hmm. flags. But this time, under Mike McDonald, it seems that they have brought they have kept those flags under control. But, of course, you still got games to go because you got... You're going to play Detroit Lions. That's not going to be easy. They haven't even played any of their competition in the NFC West yet. Yeah. So there's still a lot of things to look to to look at in the future, but at least they have the momentum going right now, and hopefully the Seahawks can figure it out against the more tougher teams like Detroit Lions. You don't, I don't, you, you're not going to say that San Francisco is going to be easy either. Of course not. What about the Rams? Because they always play the Seahawks tough no matter what. Because mm-hmm. you never want to downplay that opponent. The, well, the, the other thing to note is that if you win the games that you're supposed to win or the games that are against easier opponents that are not playing as well, then that means that sets you up to, hey, if you win one or two of those big games against those teams, all of a sudden right there, you win like the easy games for like seven games. You win a couple of the easy game, the, the harder games. Right there, you're like a 9-10 win team. You're right there pushing for playoffs every year you know so that's where we're at because you think about like half our games are going to be easy that's seven or eight games right there we could be a 10-win team easy well granted though you don't you never want to downplay an opponent that's the one thing i will caution is even if you do play those teams you don't want to downplay because today's game could have been a mess where yes it was pretty unlikely that miami was going to make that comeback but if the seahawks weren't careful they could have I'm not saying they would have lost the game, but they would have at least made it exciting, if you know what I mean. Yeah. And look, look at this. Uh, look at, for example, today. Don't count on an opponent. Look at this. Look at a team like Carolina. They actually ended up playing their backup quarterback and ended up scoring over 30 points and won a game versus when they started their regular player. So anytime you don't want to count out and saying, hey, this one change could make a difference, you know, you know, it could make the team worse or better. And you never want to count out a team because you don't know which way it's going to go. You never want to downplay an opponent because downplaying is probably the most dangerous thing that you'll ever do in sports or even just playing games with anyone. So, yeah. But yeah, I mean, I think it's going to be a good week. The next week's going to be a tough week. It's going to be against the Detroit Lions. You're playing against a formidable defensive group of the Lions and Jared Goff, formidable quarterback who tends to play well against the Seahawks. So, it's going to be a tough game. But the advantage that the Seahawks have is they're at home and it's at Monday Night Football. And I will. I'm pretty confident I'm going to be following. I will be covering that game. So that's something I'll have to keep updated. But before we go, Epic C Films, do you have anything else left to say about yeah, this yeah. game? I say that this is a really good start because going 3-0 and and starting a season, most likely you're not going to end up with the number one draft pick. So you pretty much already have counted that out. Thanks. You really <laughs> have to throw that shade at me, don't yeah. you? Because you and know that I'm the guy to... obsessed with the number one picks. And then also... Like you said, never count on pointing out because look what happened to you in fantasy this week. Okay? So, another thing. Uh, that my fantasy football team may lose, and I'll have updates on that for sure with my YouTube shorts and my membership-only content, which, by the way, if you would like to get more exclusive content on my fantasy sports, join the membership for just $5 a month. And I, I'm even trying to get Epic C Films to do it so he can watch it, maybe give me feedback, but of course he's not going to, but... Well, that's going to do it. I just want to say thank you very much for following this game and watching this video. And Epic C Films, do you have any last parting words while I say thank you for being on this show? You're welcome for having me on this show. Have a wonderful day. And don't drink and don't smoke. And lastly, go Hawks.